Hey everyone, welcome back to Coded Row. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an interaction system using a sphere collision. And in the last time, the last video I did an interaction system, it was a line trace, which is more, which is better for FPSs. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is just right click and add an input action. I'm going to call this IA underscore interact. And I'll double click into it and I'll add a trigger of pressed so that when I press down on it, it'll use my IA and my input action interact. And I'm going to go back to the map and I'll open up my BP third person character. And you'll notice that my input mapping context is IMC underscore default. So I'll click this little browse symbol here or the magnifying symbol to find it in my content browser. And I'll double click to open the IMC default. Now under mappings, I'm going to click this plus to add an actions mapping and look for my IA interact. And then I'm just going to assign this to the E key and I'll just set this trigger to press as well. And now I'm going to right click, go to my blueprint and create a blueprint interface. And I'll just call this interact or BPI interact. And I'll double click into it. And I'm just going to have this new function and call this start interact and I'll compile and save. What we have to do from here is tell the object that it's interactable. So we need to be able to tell the player and the object that we can actually interact with this object. All right. So on my BP third person character, I'm going to go over to the bottom and add in my IA interact or input action interact. And then I also want to add a component called interact sphere, but I'm going to look for a sphere collision and I'm going to go to my viewport and just make sure that the radius is big enough, something like 200 which might be a little big for interacting, but for the purpose of the tutorial, this is fine. While sphere is selected, I'm going to go over to details, type in collision, make sure it's set to overlap all dynamic and generate overlap events should be checked. Or I'll leave my IA interact here. And then I also want to click on my sphere and scroll to the bottom and do an on component begin overlap. And I'll also add an on component end overlap. So now what I'm going to want to do is drag out the other actor and add a does object implement interface. And for the interface, I'm going to select that interact interface we created, the BPI interact. And I want to return the value to a branch and then I'll connect the execution pin from my on component begin overlap sphere to my branch. And if it's true, then we want to create then we want to create a variable that will set it to interactable. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable at the bottom here and call this interactable actor. And for the type, I'm just going to select actor to be an object reference. So I'll drag this out and do a set interactable actor and just connect this node. And now for the other actor, it'll also be the test object and it'll drag out and connect to this interactable actor. And I'll hit compile and save. And now for the my on component end overlap, I'm just going to copy paste this set actor and just leave it as a blank here. And this is just because if I were to walk away from the actor after doing this, the game would never tell it to stop being an interactable actor. So my sphere would only take in everything that I overlap. So if I run through a bunch of objects in a whole map, then I can just interact with everything on a press of a button. And you don't want that. And now for my IA interact, I'm going to drag out the trigger pin and add a is valid at the very bottom with the question mark. And I'll drag out my interactable actor and do a get and connect it to the input object. And if that's true, I'm going to call in my start interact BPI interact. And I'll also connect the interactable target actor to this. And if it's false, I'll just do a print string of saying can't interact. And now in my third person map, I'm going to right click and create a blueprint class called actor. And now I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to call this BP underscore campfire. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be using the Cinti assets just because they look really nice. And I'll go ahead and add a static mesh and you can just do this with a simple sphere or a cube. But for this, I'm just making it a little flashy and I'll call this bonfire. And then I'll add another, I'll add their particle effect just called fire. And now for the bonfire, I'll select their bonfire asset they have. And then for the fire, I'll select their fire large particle. Just leave it down here. And what I'm going to want to do next is for the class settings, I'm going to make sure under implemented interfaces, I'm going to add that BPI 
interact. And this will add it down here under my interfaces. And when I double click it, it'll automatically add this event start interact into my event graph. So it'll add it, it'll add it as an event function. And what I'm going to do is actually just add a flip flop. And if A is true, I'm just going to set the visibility of the fire to be false. And I'll just copy paste it and set the B to here and set the visibility as true. I'll hit compile and save. And now when I go over to my third person map and drag out the campfire, I'll go up to the campfire. And when I hit E, it turns the fire off on. And that's because I'm in the radius of the, of this campfire. And now if I were to go over here and try, you'll see on the top left, it says can't interact. And if I go near it, it'll interact until I can't anymore. And I have a pretty large range because that it's too Actually, this is actually a pretty good range for the size of my character in the bond. So, yeah, that works out. Thanks for watching Code with Row. Like and subscribe. Comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.